Jonathan Birch. I served in the Palsar Tzalkanim, which is a division of the paratroopers, special forces, and uh, Israeli defense forces. Uh, right now I work in the private security sector for Diablo Canyon nuclear power plant. You know, I love Israel. I love Israel very much. I love God very much, and I, I believe that those two things go you know, hand in hand. You know, I don't think that somebody can say, I love God, and then say, I hate Israel. I don't, if you look at, you know, if you build a foundation for your life based on what I have, which is the Word of God, the Bible, being truth, and you can see the common theme throughout the whole Bible is that God loves Israel very much, and He, he has a promise for them. And uh, there's a hope and assurance in, in, in the truth that is espoused in the Bible. So that's what I hold my life by. I, I can understand that idea that somebody might think, oh yeah, this, this, you know, this American went over there, he's, he's Jewish, he converted to Judaism just to, to be in the military. But no, I, I didn't. I haven't converted to Judaism. I, I am a, I'm a believer in Yeshua. I love Jesus. And I, I know that He is the answer to, the, to all the hopes of the world. And um, I believe that with all of my heart. For the first time I'd ever even heard of, you know, being Jewish was when I was being made fun of by a, a kind of a peer. You know, he started calling me John a Jew, John a Jew. And I was like, what? What does that even mean? I don't even know. So I was like, kind of, you know, I, uh, you know, I went home, I asked my mom, what does that mean? I, I don't know. And it was like, I didn't have any, any uh, foundation in, in who I was as, as, a, as being born of a Jewish mother. So um, I kind of went out on my own a little bit and just uh, decided that I was going to read, read a lot, study about it, and read a lot of books. Uh, uh, around about Jewishness and you know the, the Jewish people being spread around the world. I read a lot about the Holocaust and this you know when you're a teenager this reading about something so heavy can can have an effect on you. So I think in large part that was uh, that was what um, was one of the things that kind of drove me to having such a you know a strong interest in Israel. Basically to become you know to make Aliyah you, you have to prove that you're you know Jewish, and so all it took was a letter from my mother's rabbi back in uh, New York for me to be accepted as a, as, as a citizen of Israel. And part of the, the you know, to, to become a citizen, they, they sometimes require you to serve in the military depending on your age and status or whatever, for whatever reason. So for me, uh, yeah, that was the first time I'd gone to Israel was when I'd, you know, I'd already made a decision that I was going to make Aliyah, join the military. And I didn't speak any Hebrew, so part of that initial, um, you know, move to Israel involved in, involved me going to what's called Ulpan. Yeah, I went to a Ulpan in uh, Kibbutz Mishmar Hayamik, and I, it's uh, kind of an integrate integration of uh, you know new citizens. It's it's used to you know teach people about the culture, the society, you know things like that, the language, of course, and. Um, I also did an army old pond for three months when I first went in. So, yeah, it was a lot of Hebrew. <laughs> and I've already forgotten a lot of it. When people ask me about Israel and what, you know, what I did there, how it was, it's a lot of what you might think about that country and, you know, about the world, you know, people's world perspective is very much shaped by, you know, what they believe, you know, their there, whether they may be, you know, atheist, agnostic, you know, Jewish, Muslim, Buddhist, whatever, it doesn't matter. If you talk to somebody based on, you know, their religious uh, uh, perspective, they're going to have an opinion about it that's going to be, you know, it'll, it is what it is kind of thing, you know. A, a Muslim's not going to look at the country of Israel and its existence the same way, uh, you know, a Christian would. I never fired my weapon, but uh, I, I saw people you know, I saw people die in front of me and, uh, you know, in, in 2006 in Lebanon and it, um, yeah, it affected me deeply, but, you know. Israel is very, uh, the IDF is very open to other religions. There's Muslims, there's Druze, uh, Druze, with D-R-U-Z, I don't know if you know that people group, but, and, you know, Bedouins, uh, there's all different people groups, Christians, of course. 
and they don't make up a majority of the uh, Israeli popula population, but they're welcome and they serve a lot of different, uh, you know, belief systems. And for me, I was, uh, yeah, I was a Christian. I served in the IDF, and you know, I was welcome. So when I returned to to the United States after serving in the IDF, um, I, I worked for private security companies, a few different ones over the last uh, nine or ten years, uh, either either in the capacity as a trainer for firearms, uh, you know, for uh, local law enforcement, uh, different government agencies, um, different, you know, military groups in the U.S. Well, yeah. And uh, I also uh, worked as a private security, uh, private bodyguard for, uh, you know, celebrities, high net worth individuals, and, um, you know, people who I don't really want to say their names just because it's, you know, when you work in that business, there's a kind of a, you know, uh, a respect you need to have for for it, and uh, and not talking so much about it. You know, while serving in the military in Israel, uh, my parents they lived here uh, on the central coast, and uh, they, you know, they really fell in love with Israel during a couple of uh, the course of a couple of visits to me while I was in the military. And uh, they actually live there now, so they moved there, and I feel like I had a pretty strong role in you know them deciding to move there. Uh, you know, it's uh, they yeah they lived there what about five or six years now, five years, and they love it. They've you know established uh, themselves in the community, put roots down, and are, are you know really enjoying their lives there. It's very peaceful for them. They live in the south in the Sede Boker area. And uh, it's, yeah, it's, they love it a lot. I love Israel, and to be there and to experience the culture, experience the people on a, on a first-hand basis. You know, they're like everybody else in the world, the Jewish people, the Israelis. They want you know peace. And they want uh, uh, to be able to live their lives and, and build relationship and have peace and raise their children and to be able to you know. Um, just live with them, you know, you see that. It's it's a simple thing, but it's like a thing that uh, maybe, I don't know, it's um, it's not so attainable in, in a lot of ways be, because of, you know, world views, perspectives, and, you know, ideologies, and how they affect the relationship between Israel and the rest of the world. I, I live my life, you know, according to our, the best interpretation of how I feel that God wants me to live my life. You know, I, my life is surrendered to Jesus Christ, and that's the main thing that I, uh, you know, live my life by. Something, you know, in our culture right now is a, a lot of young people kind of want to find themselves and discover, you know, for who they are and what, what drives them, what motivates them. So. You know, for me, it was a lot like I talked about my love for Israel, and my hope is that, uh, yeah, of course, I can inspire young, uh, other young people to, to, to want to move there and reestablish that soul connection uh, to to Israel. Because for me, there there is a definite, uh, you know, connection to Israel that I have. Uh, you know, it's not it, it's something that's almost unexplainable in a way. You know, for for example, you know, I, I remember when I went to uh, receive my identification card for becoming a citizen of, of Israel. It was a big deal to me, and uh, I remember the uh, the immigration officer who, who officer who dealt with me at the at the, in this immigration office in Afula. Um, she was really impressed because uh, when I went there and, and got my card, it was like. I was finally a citizen, and it was so overwhelming for me, I, I began to cry, and it was like, you know, it was something that I had no idea where it came from or why, but it happened, and she was like, oh my gosh, what are you doing, why are you crying? And I was like, I don't know, I don't know, it's like, a, it's an amazing thing, but she said, uh, yeah, you, you are crying, I know why, because you, you, your soul is here, and you've arrived, you're a citizen of Israel, and this is, this is an amazing thing, and it's like, people used to do this a while ago. You know, this is her talking. She said they used to do this a while ago. They they used to cry like this because it was such a meaningful thing to them, but not so much lately. But uh, 
it's impressive that you are doing, you know, you are crying right now because I know that you, you, you love Israel and, you know, yeah, it was a big deal. So yeah, I, I, I really hope that, uh, you know, if somebody out there sees my story, they can be inspired by that and, and um, you know, more and more people are making Aliyah, uh, moving to Israel, becoming citizens, uh, you know, they see what is going on in the world. And it's, uh, you know, it, it's, it's heartbreaking, you know, because of just, um, you know, for me, my, my perspective of it is something like uh, everybody is living upside down and inside out from what, uh, from how, how God wants them to live, how, you know, there's no respect for life and um, life is cheap in the world these days. And it's, it's very, uh, like I said, heartbreaking. So, um, you know, I, I, I hope definitely that uh, I can, you know, inspire people to, you know, look, look to something deeper, you know, like that guy was talking about for me, you know, my soul connection to Israel.